So he's leaving. While he's walking down the stairs, he looks up and he watches me fall. Later on, he said he laughed, but he kept his eyes on me. He watched me run 50, 60 yards downfield to catch this kid from behind. And I remember he said, you don't see that every day. I don't know where that came from. He walked down, walked up to me. When he walked up to me, he said, Mark, my name is Jim Reed. I'm the defensive coordinator at the University of Richmond. And he shook my hand and he said, I want to offer you a full scholarship to the University of Richmond. Went home one day and I called my mom and I said, Mom, look, I'm struggling in school. I had a 1.6 GPA when I was a freshman at the University of Richmond. On the football field, I was the fourth string and I didn't play. And I told her, I'm not smart enough to be in school. I was dyslexic, ADHD. I'm not athletic enough to play in the football field. And after I talked for about 20 minutes and complained and whined and made up every excuse in the world, my mother cut me off and she said, Mark, you can come home tomorrow and I'll never bother you and I'll never talk about this ever again. But I promise you, if you come home and you give up this opportunity, you're gonna remember this every day for the rest of your life. And he said, what are you doing with those kids? He said, those are my friends. He said, why do you think they're your friends? He said, because I like hanging out with them. We spend time together. He said, what do you spend time together doing? And I was too scared to answer him. And he looked right at me and he said, exactly. It wasn't just that play. That play really had very little to do with it. It was all that time and all that sacrifice. I was sacrificing so much. And when everyone went out to party, when they were hanging out, when they were wasting their times, when they were playing video games, when they were doing things that weren't along their path, that wouldn't help them toward their goal, rather, I was sacrificing. I was getting up early. I was lifting weights. I was practicing. I was doing things when no one else was doing them. Things that no one else wanted to do. I knew no one was doing that. And I had plenty of people trying to talk me out of it. Don't do that, man. Come chill with us. Bro, you gotta have balance. You gotta relax. You're too serious. And everyone in the world told me, you're not good enough. You are not fast enough, you are not big enough, you are not strong enough. Half the time I listened, I was like, yeah, you're right, yeah, you're right. And I'm looking at all those magazines, like I told you before, and all those guys are big and strong. I wasn't, man. But I said, I'm not big and strong now, but if I work at it each and every day, I will get there. Don't tell me what I'll never be. I'm talking to you right now. What are you doing right now and today? And I focused on that, and that's what you see. And that's one of the problems that we all have. We know where we want to be, but we focus on over there. We don't focus on right here. If you want to get to a goal, if you want to get to your dream, you got to focus on all the little steps. You have to put in your time. You have to be patient, and you have to enjoy the process. And I said, I don't know what's going to happen while I'm here, but I am going to give insane effort and I refuse to give up. That's just not what I do. The only reason they're trying to stop me from my goals is because they're scared that they can't get to theirs. They're trying to hold me back. Don't let them. Whatever you're doing now, whatever you want to be great at, whatever you want to be special at, I'm sure you, you may be already be good at it, but to be extraordinary, you have to do extra. I firmly believe that we are all here for a very specific reason, to do something truly extraordinary. But what are you going to do to get there?